Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ya Juanxi. I'm a statistician at the University of Michigan. My research has been focusing on statistical methods to improve data quality from design to analysis. I have been enjoying the discussions, especially from the Coordination Center's effort for common data elements. We care about all sources of error. So I, I will be happy to talk to you guys how to evaluate the quality of the measure and the analytic tools. So today I'm going to talk about one um, analytic tool. So now I realize we have a analytic uh, interface AI for data quality improvement. Um, the whole approach is called multi-level regression, the post verification we call it Mr. P. And the idea is to adjust the selection bias of the data to improve the representation. This is our team. Um, we have a group of software engineers, statisticians, epidemiologists, and physicians. This is a team effort. Just to um, summarize the overarching goal of our U1 project, we want to estimate the COVID infection prevalence and immunity across subgroups. And then we want to examine the health disparities with respect to asymptomatic and symptomatic patients so that we can learn the social pathways for the disparities, how these disparities may interactively impact social demographically dependent spread of the disease. Today's talk is related to our third aim to develop an interface to make this adjustment procedure publicly available. We also want to emphasize the, the, the data harmonization effort from the coordination center. It matches our aim to in the, uh, integrate electronic health records collected from hospitals with other data formats such as survey data and administrative records. So our basic approach is to have a simple random sample based measure, which is not possible. So we try to propose a random proxy for COVID infection prevalence estimation. So ideally we could have a probability sample with very high response rates, but this has never happened. Our idea is to use the hospital test records. If you have a surgery appointments, then you have to be COVID asymptomatic. You are required to take your COVID test in the designated test centers by the hospital system. That means the test case will be the same managed by the hospital system. And we adjust okay. the... Is there a question, a comment? So we'll adjust the, the representation of the hospital elective surgery patients to match the target population. So this is the basic idea. And in terms of the study design, we do make very um, strong but reasonable assumptions. These elective patients for invasive procedures, they don't have any COVID related symptoms. And then they take the COVID test three days before the scheduled surgeries. And the assumption we have is that if we adjust for their sociodemographic profile, so the profile is defined by the cross tabulation of their age, sex, race, for example, then within that sociodemographic profile, the ratio of asymptomatic to symptomatic patients would be a constant. So that when we look at the asymptomatic patients uh, infection, it will represent the trend of the COVID infection prevalence. So then the 
main idea is to capture the trend rather than the magnitude. So the AI um, adjustment approach is a Bayesian procedure. We account for the unknown sensitivity and the specificity of the COVID test. That's the measurement error. And then we gather the patient's test records, then the sociodemographic measures, as well as their residence zip codes. The zip codes are useful for us to define the target population in the catchment areas. And then we also use the zip code to link to the um, American Community Survey to get the geospatial measures on the track level. So there is no one-to-one -one mapping between zip code and uh, track. There is some linking measure there. And we adjust those. The idea is we get the zip code level measures from the American Community Survey. Those include, for example, the percentage of individuals or residents who have college degrees, the employment rate on that zip code level, the medium household income, average poverty level. We use the uh, area deprivation index. We also try to use the NADA uh, mirror. And then we also look at the urban rural percentage for that zip code. So those are the zip code level measures for each patient. And then we adjust the patient's representation based on the ACS decomposition living in the catchment area. So this is the basic idea of our Mr. P approach. And then I wanna briefly introduce this interface. I was planning to show it interactively because it was designed as an interactive interface. But because of the um, technical constraint, I have to do the CD uh, screenshot. So this is our basic input. You can upload the data that include the patient's sex, race, age, five digit zip code, the test date and the result. And then our analysis will first link your patient data to the American Community Survey based on the zip code. We account for the linking error here. Then we will first give you the descriptive summaries. So you can compare your sample representation with the targeted ACS decomposition. So you can look at um, sex, race, age, how they are different from your target population. So this is the idea to reduce the selection bias. You can see that for this data site I use as the example is from Michigan Medicine. It has collected um, 1.2 million COVID test records. That's why we feel the benefit of using such uh, big data, they are there. And the problem is how can we allow more hospitals to analyze this data? That's the motivation to design this interface. So we also present the geospatial measures from the zip code level based on the data set you have. So you can look at the urban rural decomposition of the catchment areas, education, poverty, employment rate, ADI, et cetera. So for Michigan data sites, we do see a diverse representation of uh, various sociodemographic individuals. And then you can also look at the PCR prevalence based on the collected data. So we have gathered the data between uh, 2020 March and October 2022, 20, uh, because now COVID has during that time, COVID tests were not required for elective surgery. So that requirement was paused. We don't know during this late COVID period whether they will resume. 
So you can look at the raw prevalence and then we will fit the model. I put this um, uh, page here as the illustration, but we do conduct very rigorous model selection, diagnostics, sensitivity analysis. You will have multiple model options to check whether your results change or reasonable or sensitive to your assumptions or not. This will be the most exciting page we will show you to accommodate the uh, SBCCC's uh, data harmonization and the core data elements um, mission and more details will follow on this page. We do wanna make this as an automatic data analysis flow that is reliable and reproducible. So in terms of the results, we will present the weekly prevalence estimates. And then you can also look at subdomain estimates across the sociodemographic profiles, look at geographic profiles. So here for the Michigan data site, I, I will show you the county level estimates. And again, we will also present the validation, the model diagnostic results. So here, for example, based on the prevalence, our MRP outputs will give you the weekly um, prevalence estimates together with the error. So you can see the trend across time. And then you can look into subgroups. So you can look at the trends across time for different ratio groups, as well as the difference across counties, for example, here. So you will have a, a video showing the trends across counties across time. So here, I do want to emphasize that we observe a substantial racial disparity in terms of the trend and the prevalence across uh, racial groups. We also present the uh, information about this whole procedure, how we handle the data, how we cleaned up the data. There are duplicate records. There are invalid zip codes, et cetera. So we wanna make sure that this whole procedure is transparent and reproducible. So we have this learn page that covers all the details about this procedure. And then so far we are doing this data dissemination or this interface dissemination stage. We want to make sure that we protect the confidentiality of the patient records, especially with the five-digit zip codes. And then we try to get more hospitals uh, to apply or implement or interface so that we can aggregate local hospital estimates toward a national level estimate. And this interface will be uh, maintained and regularly uh, updated across time. And then in terms of methodology, we will focus on the social pathways to health disparity inspiration, especially when you look at the different trends across the social uh, groups. And we will harmonize this hospital test data with the survey data. Um, this is the list of papers we have published around this AI adjustment procedure for data quality. Thank you.